This episode of the Cold Popshire podcast was brought to you by our Patreon. If you want to tell us which films we should watch, listen to up to two extra exclusive podcasts a month, or give us something to discuss in our new post credit scenes at the end of each episode, then please consider joining the cult and donating at www.patreon.com slash coldpopshire. All right. Hey, we've made it. Here we are. Where am I? We're, you're at the end of the, uh, a long road, and you look back, and there's nothing but Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street films. <laughs> there's nothing but bloodstains and dead bodies and, uh, and in my wake. female nudity. Well, I could, hey, you know Hey, what? it's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, hey, Richard, I'm AJ. Hey, uh, hey um... AJ. Hello. This is the Cold Pops podcast. Um, and you are joining us at the end of a long and dusty ro- road, as we just said, um, where we have rewatched, we have watched for the second time in our lives um, the entirety of Friday the 13th, the entirety of A Nightmare on Elm Street. And this past week we've just the entirety finished watching of the crossover yeah the entirety of the crossover so we did a nightmare on elm street episode and a friday the 13th episode this is our freddy vs jason episode plus just so that we're talking about more than one movie we also threw in the 2009 remake of friday the 13th and the 2010 remake of a nightmare on elm street so we're going to be talking about those three films for this episode mm-hmm so I would recommend listening to the last two episodes if you haven't listened to them before, because I doubt um, this one will make. Because this is going to be filled with inside jokes, yeah. oh my god, and callbacks. Yeah. Oh, so many callbacks I've got planned. Mm-hmm. Like, what's one of them? Um, do you remember on the Friday the Thirteenth episode how mm-hmm. um, we had a, a, a bread break? Yeah, ma'am. I we thought we could do that again. We didn't talk about it on pod, though. <laughs> yeah, it's a callback just for us. Ah, oh, nice. Thank you. I hope you've got a, a single slice of white bread at the ready. I don't, but I have the liquid equivalent of a single slice of white bread. I'll drink to that. A jar of water. <laughs> Cheers. Clink. If you don't know, we record this separate. We're in separate houses and separate cities. Otherwise, you would have actually just heard a clink. Yeah, so I have to. I have to actually make the clink sound with my mouth. Um, speaking of, we haven't actually really talked about this on the podcast. Um, but right up top, let's do a little plug. We've got a web series that's currently coming out one episode a week over on the Cole Pops YouTube channel called Ready to Record, um, which I'm enjoying making and I'm enjoying watching back after making <laughs> um and you guys if you don't know anything about the cold pops youtube channel you should check it out so it's, it's called ready to record and the the basic premise is it's richard and i uh the conversations we have before we hit record on the podcast um fictionalized dramatized shall i say so it's, <laughs> it's a scripted show where we take you know either some big news of the week or just something we've been thinking about um and we turn it into a fun little comedic crossover between like a comedy sketch and a video essay um and we just released an episode on jk rowling uh which i think is our best episode yet um mm. and i'm really proud of it so please go and check that out on the cold pops youtube channel if you like um I'm along with all the other great videos that we have on there and then why not swing over to the cold pops discord and say hi mm. and all, you can tell us what you thought of it all our fans and friends live <laughs> all right so let's kick it off uh like a dead leopard's head uh, that's not my joke i'm sorry what's that for um what I think Chopper Reed, remember him? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, he what says a it. fucking roadblock in the middle of the, <laughs> the launch into the episode content. It'd make a Chopper Reed <laughs> joke. Insane. All right, keep going, keep going. All right, um, so Freddy vs. Jason mm. came out in 2003 after decades of discussion, as we, we mentioned briefly last week. Mm. Um, this was earliest talked about um, as being the seventh entry in the Friday the 13th series. So oh, wow. eventually manifested itself in 2003, directed by Ronnie Yu. And 
AJ, what's this one about? Uh, so this is the crossover. This is the most ambitious crossover in film history. Um, it's not at all. It's actually very natural and uh, makes a lot of sense for this, these two franchises to cross over. Um, but it is set, chronolo- chronologically, it's set before Jason X. Um, so yes. it's set after Jason goes to hell and after Freddy's dead, the final nightmare. And pretty much um, the town of Elm Street has returned to normality because uh, Freddy's been dead for such a long time that everyone's forgotten about him, and that's when you truly die, as Coco, Pixar's Coco, taught us. <laughs> um, which, of course, was pioneered by this movie, that philosophy. Um, and <laughs> Fre- so Freddy can't go back to Elm Street because no one remembers him, so he's like, all right, I've got to make them remember me. So he searches the bowels of hell and finds Jason Voorhees, um, which I don't know how hell works because you see him find him at the end of Jason goes to hell. So I guess that was him finding him. I don't know. Anyway, he finds Jason and he sends him up. To, he, he resurrects him somehow. How does he do that? He just does it, doesn't he? He can just do that. He just does it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he sends Jason to Elm Street where he kills a bunch of, or he kills one person in the famous Elm Street house, which calls into, um, you know, calls into question from the adults who remember uh, Freddy Krueger. You know, they're like, oh my God, is Freddy back? The teens, the, the the fun teen characters work out what's happening, um, work out who Jason is. And um, despite the fact that it's not Jason killing, they, this or, sorry, it's not Freddy killing, they think it is and so freddy is therefore resurrected but there's a complication because because before, he needs people to be scared of him yeah to yeah have yeah power. yeah exactly but before freddy can uh start killing off teens in their in their dreams again lo and behold jason's killing them before freddy can get to them and so freddy before gets, they can even get a chance to fall asleep yeah so freddy gets real mad and it becomes a a three-way battle between freddy jason and and the teens who are fighting for their lives on both ends. Um, it ends with a pretty cool battle on the dock of Camp Crystal Lake, where both Freddy and Jason are kind of defeated by each other, and the the human characters, what's left of them, survive. And the last scene in the film is Jason emerging from a foggy uh, lakeside, holding Freddy's head in his hand, and Freddy looks at the camera and, and winks, implying that who won? To be honest, Jason, I think. It's, yeah. as, as much as they try to make it look, they both won. I feel like Jason got the upper hand. And Jason, chronologically, yeah. is the only one who did come back for another movie, though it's not yeah. specifically because he didn't beat Freddy, I guess. But Yeah, it's fine. so that's the um, the very last scene of the film is the Jason holding Freddy's head. Mm. Um, and apparently during advance and test screenings of the film, um, they took out the last shot of the film and instead it would just, um, some text would appear on screen saying, on August 15th, 2003, see the final 60 seconds and see who has survived and what is left of them. Wow. God, that's... that would be infuriating. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, but that was for that was for test audiences, did you say? Yeah, test and advanced screening. So like advanced you know, if you saw it like a week early. Oh yeah. my god. Test audiences I understand. Like fuck test audiences, who cares? But advanced screenings, man, those are people who have won competitions, dude. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sucks. Oh that's so cheeky. <laughs> all right. So what did you think of this film? Um, I thought it was all right. I remember when we first watched this film, when we did it for, because this, we didn't mention this, this is Film Franchise Fortnite's Redux, the final, Redux. The final pew, Redux pew, pew. where we, we rewatch um, a franchise from our first season. Um, so I remember when we first watched this, it was towards the tail end of that night where we watched like six movies in one day. Yeah. Um, and I remember we were like, this is actually the best movie ever. Like we were like, it's so perfect. Yeah. We, we were clearly, um, we, we were aware of our own bias, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. Watching these movies at a, at a more sensible pace, um, and this was the first one I'd watched in a couple of days, um, and I didn't watch any the same night, I wasn't as blown away by it um, as I was initially. I think I think when I, I've come to appreciate the filmmakery of 
those early Friday films and those and the select few nightmare films. This one does really fit more into. I mean, it always did fit into the more schlocky, um, self aware yeah. category as opposed to. The, well, it's very um two thousand and three. Yeah, as well. yeah, as opposed to the early Friday films. And by early, I literally, I mean like maybe the first two and the first nightmare film, which feel quite genuine, <laughs> like quite quite organic trying to trying to be real movies good movies not just like play to the to the masses um that being said i do still consider what is made to be the story in this movie a really good idea the the like yeah, the, the way they resurrecting and then yeah. getting jealous yeah yeah that's a really good idea and so yeah it's it's cool that like a freddy vs jason movie feels like the best a freddy vs jason movie could be as opposed to like batman v superman which fucked that up and i haven't seen yeah. alien vs predator in 15 years but i i don't know if the, if the general consensus is that the general consensus is that it's pretty bad yeah yeah well i mean it would be for this one as well right what's the ron tomato score oh uh, what would you guess um uh it's not especially bad it's just this is the kind of movie that gets like 42 percent or something like that oh my god you're so close what is it 41 41 fuck that's my thing your thing is you get them exactly right my thing is i get them one number off which is almost tantalizingly as close well it's as impressive it's equally as skill <laughs> um there's you have this oh no actually you have more ch- chance i guess of being one off because you could be either side mm. um yeah so I remember that, like like you said, we watched this movie the first time and thought it was the greatest movie we'd ever seen. <laughs> Watching it this time, I felt the same way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like it, it is the the human, the the human, the the teen stuff mm. is very like run of the mill, but the actual Freddy versus Jason stuff is like is the payoff you've yeah. been waiting since nineteen eighty four. Yeah, I would agree. It is the. Um- you get what you pay for, yeah. Like, like, like you mentioned, Batman v Superman. To when we finally see those characters squaring off, it lasts like three minutes, and then, like, it, it doesn't deliver on its promise. Yeah. Whereas there's a solid chunk of this film that's actually Freddy and Jason fighting, and it's just as every bit as like schlocky and silly mm. as you would as you wanted want it to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this they kill also- each other with each other's um, iconic weapons, weapons yeah. as well, which is cool because Freddy. Uh, kill it like stabs Jason with a machete, but not after, uh, but only after he's had his arm chopped off. And then Jason comes back with Freddy's dismembered arm and stabs Freddy with the claws on yeah. his hand. So that's cool. that's great. Mm. Uh, and this this is probably my favorite. Um, that my my favorite way that uh, Kruger has looked. It's yeah. my favorite design. Uh, I think it looks great in this movie, and also it's probably my favorite performance of Robert England. Yeah, no, um, I agree. He is good in this. Yeah. Like, like, and it's interesting because he hadn't canonically played Freddy in twelve years. What, really? Yeah, Holy like he was shit, in he was course. in New Nightmare nine years earlier, but oh, Freddy's Dead right. was like twelve years before this. Um, and so it's like it, it, it's crazy to me that he would then deliver his best performance. You know, well, yeah, time to to ruminate on it oh, yeah mm. um but yeah it's just there's something it, it feels very lived in and and i mean that comes from playing a character so many times but yeah i, I really enjoyed it and also even like jason like maybe not because they they didn't cast kane hodder because they wanted someone who was even taller than him so that there would be the massive kind of height difference between him and freddie's so they got a guy called ken kersinger mm-hmm. um and his design isn't my favorite necessarily. He's a bit thinner than we, than kind of you expect from Jason. Um, whereas like Kane Hodder is really a lot bulkier. But uh, that's probably my favorite characterization of Jason. Right. I found him really sympathetic in this movie. Yeah. Like th- there's a bit where so um, Freddy's killing Jason inside Jason's dream, and he's like drowning him, and it cuts to like Jason out in the real world, and he's like choking on water. And I felt sorry for him. That's a good point. And we talked um, last week. I was like, what is the difference between Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers from Halloween, right? They're essentially the Mm. same. And maybe it does actually just come down to that context of who they are. Like Michael Myers is a remorseless shape. You know, he's the shape. So he just kills because he kills. And I mean, they, they 
make up some convoluted curse later on but if you don't the, the, count that the as cult canon, of thorn yeah yeah it's it's not um you know he's just he's just a machine whereas jason has quite a sympathetic backstory and you see you see a lot in freddy vs jason a lot of like his time as a child at, at camp crystal lake and when he drowned mm. and things like that um yeah is this the, the only time we ever actually see the camp during like camp time maybe when there's like kids yeah. running around yeah probably and that's a good point because that is something all right i gotta admit a, a feeling i've had about friday the 13th I'm, I'm putting it in this episode i feel like the if you if it's one of those things that on paper that it's like jason Voorhees, his motivation is that he kills teens because he drowned while teens were having sex and doing drugs and that's why he's attracted to killing sexually active teens i think that's great i think that's such a cool idea but i feel like it's not really in the movies what? until this one this is the one that's the most like yeah. this is clearly uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. why he's doing it i think there's also like um because it's, it's a typical like you know in, in scream that like don't have sex in a horror movie or you'll die and like it gives it like a canon reason for happening yeah yeah it's like this guy it's um because there's obviously like like i remember we talked us talking last time about it and he said that jason kills you for having sex because it's the one thing that you want yeah you know and and it's like (laughs) punishing you because it's because it's so good it's it's like the one thing that isn't like breathing or sleeping well i mean sleeping is another one but um it's like the one thing that the only reason you can't go without is purely because of your carnal desires yeah right and that's what's so compelling about it um but yeah, and, and then it's like, you know, okay, what if there was a character who genuinely would want to kill you for having sex? Why, like, what would his be, his motivation be? And then it's like this whole story concocted around it. But I mean, I don't know if that's a trope that's invented from Friday the 13th or if Friday the 13th is like subverting it in a way. Didn't we learn that Halloween unintentionally started? and that's why we talked because there's the talked about there's the one minute eight second sex scene in it yeah and we talked with it like let's go upstairs and have sex and they're like whoo good sex (laughs) (laughs) and we talked about how like um it's the blank black panther for sexually frustrated people but but it wasn't it wasn't intentional (laughs) that uh, it wasn't intentional that laurie strode um survives because she's a virgin yeah john carpenter's sort of spoken out against that i think sean cunningham sean cunningham has as well saying that it's not like a morality play Mm. yeah which is really interesting Mm. speaking of a lack of morals um there's uh a couple of famous lines in freddy vs jason that have tarnished the reputation of it somewhat um so there's uh in, in uh the dream master freddie has a line where he goes how sweet fresh meat and uh when this new girl shows up um in uh freddie vs jason it's kelly Rowland from destiny's child that shows up and he says how sweet dark meat and it's one of those things that you go oh, <laughs> like because <laughs> it's not like it's one of those things, it's not that bad, but it's like, and it's already Freddy Krueger. Yeah, yeah. So well, it's like. Kim, Camille Nanjani has a famous. Yeah, has, has a bit about yeah, it. Yeah. Where he says that, you know, we expect better from, it's like yeah. a child murderer, but a racist. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and then immediately Kelly Rowland uh, follows this up with like a, uh, like a quick one, two of a couple of, couple of digs at Freddy. Um, and one of them she says well let me ask you a question uh what kind of a um and the a homophobic slur the other f word uh, dre- yeah dresses up in a christmas sweater like goes around in a christmas sweater mm. which okay obviously the usage of the word sticks out like a sore thumb second of all it's not a very good burn <laughs> <laughs> like and freddy krueger is a guy who knows being burned <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like a line from like an epic rap battle of history with Freddy Krueger in it. <laughs> like I know you're used to being burned or something like that. Um, Kelly that- Rowland versus Freddy Krueger. Um, yeah, like and, and it's also interesting, it's interesting um, because the the writers of the film have been asked about this quite a few times. Been like, why'd you put that in the film? And they not only did they not write it in the script, but they actually when they saw the first cut of the film, asked them to take it out. Wow! Um, Even in two thousand three, so when like that word was onset, like commonplace. Yeah. Um. 
No, I mean, like it was one of those things that like um I, it was like commonplace but but don't tell your mum like yeah yeah sure you know like like it, it's still because there's an episode of the simpsons where um nelson says like it's it's the great pumpkin the, the you know it's apparently the, the great pumpkin charlie brown and nelson says that the grain pumpkin is so gay and it was like this was like you know mid 2000s and it was like hey come on like you shouldn't say that um and so it's like even though these, these things were like commonplace they they weren't expected to be in media mm-hmm. and like media was expected to know better kind of thing but um yeah i mean i don't know if kelly Rowland specifically has been asked about it. i couldn't find a comment from her but the the writers insist that it was an onset improvisation that they objected to and tried to take out what do, i mean what do you think of it in the context of the film um i mean again i feel like if i saw this movie in 2003 um sadly i probably wouldn't have bet <laughs> you would have been like hell yeah no, you not tell at all, but <laughs> I, would, I probably wouldn't have noted it as a particularly bad word um I, actually, maybe in 2003, I would have never heard of that word. But, you know, mid-2000s, that word was was one that... that I, I think it is that, like, if I heard one of my friends say that, I wouldn't think twice. But if, if it's like, seeing it in a movie just feels weird. Mm-hmm. And even weirder now. Like, compared to, it's used in um, The Hangover as well. And that one, I didn't question it as much because it felt so, like, they're parodying the kind of people that would say that. Right. And, um... And, and you, you know it, it's used for um be, i guess because of the context it's used to kind of shock you because he's talking about how his friends are real civil and then i don't know he, if i'm on your team with that one i think that's still an, an, an appropriate use of it in the hangover well i, I just think like, like that, that it's not as like it doesn't stick out as much because it doesn't stick it's supposed out to stick You're out right, yeah whereas in this you, like you hear it and you go imagine imagine if <laughs> after she says it freddy krueger's like whoa <laughs> and, like that's his standard is that he's he's like look i'm a i'm a racist child killer but i'm not a homophobe god yeah, i mean i mean have you seen a fucking a nightmare on Elm street too that's true um, <laughs> i think yeah it's it's troubling and and it sticks out and it's sort of like it it dates the movie more than anything else in it which is saying something because mm. the, these movies get quite um male gazy at times and they and a lot of exploitation of young young actresses and things like that and that and yet that feels like it's the the thing mm. you remember from the movie <laughs> yeah speaking of exploitation of young actresses mm. um apparently the biggest problem that occurred on set was a fight between the director and Catherine isabella who played gib uh she had signed on to the film with the promise that she would not have to do nude scenes during the shoot ronnie you went back on this promise and repeatedly tried to pressure her to get naked cool man it's a fun little behind the scenes story eventually they they settled on using a body double which character was gib uh, she was isabel <laughs> uh, Catherine Isabel's character. Let me look it up. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's probably like one person who gets naked in the whole in the whole series. I don't know why it's in, in, important for me to find this. <laughs> oh yeah, she's like the 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 like tomboyish one who um her boyfriend gets killed by Jason at the start. It's like the first he gets he gets stabbed and then uh, squeezed to death in a in a couch. And a sofa bed that oh, yeah, that yeah. closes in on itself. Um, she's also the lead in a film called Ginger Snaps and its sequels, Ginger Snaps 2, Unleashed, and G- Ginger Snaps Back, The Beginning. <laughs> well, add it to the motherfucking list, bro. I am. I'm adding it to the franchise list. What number should it be? <laughs> um, Whatever number we land on after this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm putting it just because I, I like to add things randomly. So I'm just putting it between Beach Party and Tarzan ginger snaps is a horror franchise oh my god um um anywho uh spe- sorry speaking of um kelly Rowland's character this is one of my my favorite little pieces of because reading a few interviews with the um with the writers and stuff to to learn about you know what how they felt about that whole thing but um there's one that apparently uh kelly Rowland's character was supposed to die or um that it was going to be her final stand is that she was going to face off against jason um in the same way and say that he's not she's not scared of him anymore and then in the same way that nancy did to freddie at the end of nightmare on elm street Mm -hmm. she'd be like i'm not scared of you anymore and then freddie would be like wrong one bitch and then kill her i thought that would have been like a fun little moment wow i wonder what changed (laughs) um 
so that it's it would have been funny if she's like i'm not scared of you anymore and he's like well you're scared of him and she like turns around and jason's there that would yeah because <laughs> yeah. she's the only character that they collaborate to kill in the midst yeah. of their fight as well yeah um, freddie only kills one person in this movie really well he yeah. re- jason really did steal his thunder didn't yeah. he? yeah <laughs> Wow, that's that's a legitimately interesting piece of trivia, dude. <laughs> uh, what, what do you, what do you think the the body count is? Um, okay, if if Freddy only kills one person, I reckon it's it's quite low. Then I'm gonna say six. Teen. Sixteen. That's yeah. the highest one. <laughs> well, remember he goes to the bit where he um, Jason shows up in like the cornfield and just slaughters uh, like an entire yes. party. Yeah. That ra- there's there's a lot of um deaths are just unnamed party goer kind of thing yeah 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 okay yeah yeah that makes sense uh it's also interesting to note um just some other alternate versions of this film there was um several earlier like for quite a few drafts uh there were twists considered that would have connected the backgrounds of freddie and jason uh one was that um freddie had either raped or had consensual sex sex with jason's mum and would be his father um another twist uh would have been that freddie worked at camp crystal lake in the past and either molested jason as a child or was somehow connected to his drowning that's better i like that better than (laughs) yeah um thus giving him a motivation to track him down um but they were both eventually dropped um as they felt they were too contrived and too dark for the film too contrived Oh <laughs> my god, this coming from the series, the the two series of films where like dead characters are routinely brought back to life and suspicious and, and yeah. tenuous Well, they're ways. Not, it's not really contrived in this film, they're just like, oh, I want to bring Jason back to life. I, gu- I guess he is now. Yeah, why can he, do, why can he bring <laughs> Jason back to life but not himself? Like, yeah. what's going on there? Well, because his power's based on fear, I think it makes sense. Okay, fair enough. All right, okay. <laughs> Um, and also, at one point, we had um, we would have had Tommy Jarvis coming back, at, um, who might have been played by Jason Bateman. Wow, that's a very. Oh, I guess he would have been older. I was about to say that's a very. Jason Bateman was like a recent development by that age, but yeah, he would have been. But older. yeah, he would have obviously been an older one who would have come in and been like, "I know what to do." Mm, yeah. That would have been cool to see him again. But they they made the decision not to use like any legacy characters. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, um, other than Freddie and Jason, hey, obviously. we talked before about and uh, on the Friday the Thirteenth episode how you own, the the word fart is said in part six and then apparently not said again till the remake in two thousand nine. And while mm-hmm. fart isn't said in Freddie vs Jason, <laughs> you do see and hear a character. You fart. see a fart. <laughs> <laughs> you see him fart on the window, and you um, you smell a fart. <laughs> um, it's when there. So there's a whole storyline in this about characters who remembered Freddie were were institutionalized and so they escape their like inst- their their medical institute by um distracting the guard to get his keys and he does it by farting on the window but the fart is definitely put in post so it's like him just rubbing his butt and so the the poor actor thought he was just pulling a moon a moon <laughs> and then they turned it into a fart joke um which i would be furious about if i was that actor <laughs> Person. fair enough but that actor that, that character he has what i feel like i must have seen in a trailer or something like you remember when we did the santa claus how i talked about how the line he is too santa was like ingrained yeah. in my memory because i saw it on a hundred vhs tape trailers for the santa claus um and, yeah. and similar to i gotta get married <laughs> from santa claus too um there's a part where that character where he gets killed and he's like half asleep and so freddy's like killing him and there's like this real cool like high angle shot of him as he like screams towards the camera and goes somebody please wake me up and i feel like i saw that in a trailer or something because it's very like that's nightmare in essence right like that's the whole Mm. the whole crux i I really like that part i thought it thought it's really effective um yeah so i liked that i did like it He's, that's the one guy that Freddy kills. Mm. There you go. Uh, so I've been doing dumb IMDb trivia for every um, mm-hmm. film in these. Um, and this one, I got when Jason walks out of the water holding Freddy's head, Freddy winks. Many people are 
people believed this to be a special effect, but it wasn't. Robert England winked at the camera. <laughs> That's not what people think is the special effect. The special <laughs> effect is that it's a disembodied head. What are you talking about? That's so funny, dude. <laughs> That's like a dad joke, like an accidental dad joke. Yeah, you know, like a lot a of people. You, you pause switch. it and you go. You know, a lot of people thought that was special effects, but it's not. He really winked. <laughs> That's so um, funny. Sadly, though, this is the end of Dumb IMDb Trivia for wow. the Free vs. Jason franchise. Um, because I just I just couldn't settle on... There's some that it's like, oh, if I do, if I explain, like, say it and I do it in a funny voice, it could sound real dumb or something. But I know the feeling. I don't want to tarnish the reputation of Dime Amity B Trivia, which is a segment we didn't introduce. I presume if you're listening to this episode, you've listened to the previous two, and you would know that I'm to be Trivia is user-submitted, so there's quite often, um, yeah, it allows for very silly kind of mm. entries. Um, sometimes they're just provably factually inaccurate. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes they're just worded funny, and, and we, you and I both get a kick out of when... Um, they put, you know, their opinion into effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so before we move on, I and this is this could be a good segue to between the films. Um, do do you feel differently when we first watched the Freddy vs Jason movies? We watched them in order of when they were released, right? So we didn't watch mm. all of the Fridays first and then all of the nightmares. We watched all of the Fridays up to four and then started a nightmare on Elm Street and interchangeably moved through them so that we could get the replicate the experience of them coming out one yeah. after the other. Um, we didn't do that this time. We watched all of Friday. Then we watched all of nightmare and then we watched Freddy vs. Jason and the two remakes. And do you feel differently having watched it that way? Um, I don't know. I think, I feel like the main, the, the main thing that makes me feel different is the fact that I, I didn't, watch them all in like two days yeah yeah that's true as well but that is something to do with it because i you would I, think I, I found myself more attached to them this time like the characters mm, yeah, yeah yeah um and that that's probably like like maybe a little bit because it's like you know you're with freddie for a week and then and you're with jason for a week um and so by the time you know you see a reboot or them come together you're like yeah i fucking i know everything about this character where i was like I got a bit more jumbled, I think, the way we did it the first time. I feel, I kind of feel the opposite. Maybe not jumbled, but to me, like, you would think that after doing these two franchises, watching the crossover would be the majority of what this episode is, with the the reboots just being kind of, like, tacked on the end. But because I hadn't seen uh, Jason in a week before watching this, I feel like I have so much more to say about the remakes of each film than freddy right, vs jason like i think because you when we watched them it was like we mixed them together you know they were uh, they were interchanging yeah. with each other so it felt a bit more like they were already um combined in a way like we're yeah. we're, we're watching um converging stories this Ooh. this time it didn't feel like that and so freddy vs jason as a film maybe that's why i wasn't as impacted by it and maybe it's because i watched it didn't watch it the same day as a bunch of other movies and also because they hadn't been um interchangeable and mixed in leading up to it yeah i would almost if you were going to replicate this and you and you don't mind about release order or anything i would probably recommend going all of nightmare then all of jason because I think Freddy vs. Jason will have a a stronger impact if you haven't seen Freddy in a while going into it. Yeah, then if you haven't seen Jason, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it is like, Freddy's back! Yeah. Whereas Jason, we saw him a year earlier yeah, than Jason. Yeah, man, next. that's such a good point, yeah. that's a, Yeah, that's how we should have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, because we, we did Jason versus Freddy. Like a couple of fucking fools. <laughs> um okay so continue the franchise i'm gonna do continue the fan- franchise three times on this episode oh my god because each of the films has its own path okay so there is freddy versus jason versus ash which was based on a treatment for a sequel that's ash from the evil dead um trilogy uh played by bruce campbell and so that was in 2007 and 2008 it's a comic book series meant for six issues and then it was also followed by Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, The Nightmare Warriors in 2009. 
Okay. So we could do that sometime on uh, film franchise follow ups on our Patreon. Yeah, and that that works as a follow up to three separate franchises we've covered. Damn. So that's kind of cool. It is interesting that um that Ash is the next one they went to. Like if you're opening up the kettle of worms to be to the kettle of worms, the can of worms, <laughs> the kettle of fish. Please do not mix. The fish will eat all the worms. <laughs> um. Like, you know, because we, we, we've sort of, you, you would imagine it would be like Freddy versus Jason versus Michael next. Um, yeah. Or Hellraiser. Well, actually, sorry, I, I mentioned this last time. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to mention this time. But um, that there was a draft that involved Pinhead from the uh, Hellraiser series. Um, and they were, the fight would have taken them into hell, even though hell razor doesn't actually involve hell it's like a different dimension that is referred to as hell because it's all a bunch of that's full of sadomasochism yeah um and they find torture pleasurable but obviously humans find it awful um and it would have had pinhead show up and say a gentleman what seems to be the fuss or something like that i did an impression of pinhead last time not knowing what he sounds like and now i can say that he would have been like gentlemen <laughs> um because i know more what he sounds like there still wasn't a very good impression maybe when I, i'll nail it next time but also it's interesting it's worth mentioning that this film has Freddy vs jason has a very similar plot to the first hellraiser because it's about someone who is using tries to resurrect someone from hell um by like killing people so that they can get their power back yeah true wow wow maybe maybe there's um someone could be sued that's exciting mm. <laughs> that's my continue the franchise a lawsuit <laughs> so there's also um there was a Freddy vs jason game called Freddy vs jason hell unbound that was um being talked about for a long time this would have been like the snes um would have been just after jason goes to hell the final friday um Oh, sorry, no, actually, it was considered for the Dreamcast, PS2, and Xbox. Um, and it would have allowed up to four players with Freddy or Jason as player characters in various forms, such as like Hooded Jason, Snake Freddy. Premise would have been that Freddy and Jason are permanently stuck in hell due to their countless unforgivable sins. Death makes the offer that whoever of the two can fight their way out of hell against demons and uh, all its other hell people um, can leave um, and the other gets stuck there forever. Um, and so they would be stuck in their own personal hell um, and would be visions of Elm Street and Crystal Lake. Death, you don't have to let any of either of them out. What, why <laughs> yeah. are you staking it as like a, like a game between them? Yeah. So do you have any continue the franchise ideas that are specific to Freddy vs. Jason? Yes. And it's very, very cool that you just mentioned that video game because it's on that topic. So um, we hadn't played this. So is mine. Ooh. Ooh. Between the last time we recorded and now, we played um, the Freddy vs. Well, the, the the Friday the Thirteenth. The Friday the Thirteenth. Um, PlayStation Four game is it exclusive to PlayStation or is it on? Yeah. On other other uh, it's not. It's on okay. PC as well. I think it's on PC. My sister said she had it on PC. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, we played it with um, one of our listeners, uh, Ryan slash a- AKA Gas Cadet. Um, so shout out to you, dude, who was not only mentioned by name last week, but then was also the subject of the post credit scene. Um, so that's pretty funny. Um, and uh, we, yeah, we like, pl- we played with him and we sort of talked a bit about um, the rights were held up, which is why like support for the game was suspended. Yeah. The, I think the ga- that's a real shame because we were playing the game and it was cool to see how you can play as like the Jasons from two through to like six or so um and you can play in a couple of the different camps and you can play at like the jarvis household and, and you can play as she- a shelly finkelstein yeah if you're playing as a counselor yeah 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 um as well as jason so, so if you've never played it before you play as either jason or a counselor and it's essentially a game of go home stay home where yeah um, if you're jason you have to kill all the counselors to win if you're a counselor you either have to call the cops escape in the car 
or like I think you can no yeah if you're playing as a female you can knock off Jason's mask and then put it on and then kill him or something like right. that but that, that's I think the most difficult way to end the game right um, and so it's very cool and I, and I think it's a shame that the, the rights got held up because it stopped obvious mm. ones like Uber Jason from being a, a unlockable skin yeah I was, I was, there's also like um, they were going to introduce a paranoia game mode which Ooh. was going to be that you all play as counsellors but one of you was secretly like the killer or like jason um and so wow you, you know you like just one person gets told you have a dif- different motive from everyone else wow it's like mafia um yeah and uh, but yeah sorry so yeah. so my continue the franchise um would not only be re- you know renew support for the game give it uber jason but also like give it the the ship that they are on in Jason X, you know, make that one of the locations. Yeah, and yeah. on the topic of Freddy vs. Jason, I think Freddy Krueger should just be a Jason that you like, you unlock. Like, if there's yeah. two categories of characters, there's counselors and Jasons, the Jasons shouldn't just be Jasons. They're already not. One of them is part five, who is, who is Roy. Yeah. So you should be able to get Pamela Voorhees. You should be able to get Baby Jason. I think that would be a fun one from, from the first <laughs> film. Um, and Freddy Krueger. And I was thinking as well it would be cool if Elm Street was a, was a, was a map or maybe like Freddy's... Um, Freddy's furnace could be a map as well. Like yeah, the, the, the furnace. boiler room. He's the boiler room that isn't in all, all the dreams. Um, and just really like relish in the the fun of playing as as Freddy in a in a Friday the thirteenth format. Um Yeah. Yeah. Um I it's also worth mentioning, um, because this was something I wondered, that um once the lawsuit's all done, they're not it's they're not gonna start adding shit to the game again. They said it's been too long and It'll be too much work to like go back into the dev kits and stuff. So there is the apparently is another game called Dead by Daylight or something. That yeah, which is like a very similar yeah yeah um thing. Um, so my idea is also a video game. Um, or I mean, it doesn't have to be a video game. Really, it could be a movie. But do, you know the games Crash Bandicoot Purple and Spyro the Dragon Orange. Yeah. Um, where it's like, or, or um, if you're not familiar with those, there's also the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour episodes of um Jimmy Neutron and um. For feeling our parents, so I, I like the idea of take Jason and Freddy and just swap them. Could be in a game, could be in a, a couple of short films or a couple of feature films or one feature film. Um, but yeah, give Jason dream stalking powers and l- l- set Freddy loose on a on a camp. Like I feel like Freddy wouldn't stalk the kids as much on the camp because um, he, he likes to quip too much. Mm. Um, he also likes to uh, torture. Yeah, J- Freddy's definitely a lot more sadistic. Yeah, and like it really comes across in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. Um, are we going to talk about titles, or should we? Ju- we should just do it now, right? Because this is the only one that time it'll be. Yeah, relevant. Yeah. So we talk about titles a lot on this podcast, and Freddy vs. Jason is kind of the inevitable title. And knowing that they didn't have the rights to um, call their films Friday the Thirteenth anymore makes a lot of sense, but you know a friday on elm street it's right there isn't it mm, a nightmare at crystal lake yeah yeah i mean but crystal lake isn't in the title yeah the it'd films, be, be if, if, again if they if the movies were called camp blood like i suggested a nightmare on camp blood would be cool it's yeah. r- it's right there and they're so close but they're like freddy vs jason bro but I guess a Friday on Elm Street doesn't carry the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Freddy vs. Jason is a great title. I a think a Friday like- on Elm Street is, is just bloody cracking open a beer and watching the game. <laughs> just guys being dudes. Uh, just a classic Friday on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> Okie dokie. So now we are brought to Friday the 13th, 2009. Mm. That's right. It's a reboot, baby. Directed by Marcus Nispel. Who, do you recognize that name? No, I do not. He directed the Tex Chainsaw Massacre uh, reboot, oh. which is part of um, Platinum Dunes, which um, mm. often, you know, people will talk about, oh, Michael Bay ruined these movies. Michael Bay um, had a production company called, well, I think, well, he still does, a production company called Platinum Dunes that in the 2000s did remakes of Tex Chainsaw Massacre, uh, Amityville Horror, Last House on the Left, Friday the 13th, and A Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't think they weren't involved with the Halloween reboot, but we did get one around that same time um but uh yeah what's uh what's this one about so this one is one of probably the most interesting remakes ever made in that it um 
it's it says you know it's marketed as a remake of the first film it's actually a remake of the first three films uh because it wants to get that that classic iconography of mm. hockey mask uh jason but as we all know richard jason didn't wear the hockey mask until part three and he wasn't even the yeah. killer in part one so the movie starts with like during the opening titles um you see yeah, like well, so we get opening credits yeah yeah and then an opening scene yeah and then the title and then the movie starts yeah so the opening credits play over like a montage of the end of the first movie where where pamela Voorhees is decapitated after trying to kill the, the last remaining um friday the 13th survivor um and then we get a scene which is like um look i'll say it it's a real fucking great little short film yeah it's like Friday the 13th, in essence, distilled down into a 20-minute short film. Because it's a long time before... Pre-title sequence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, as a pre-title sequence. It's a long time before you see the title. Um, And it's just... It's just what... It's just what you would describe if you described a Friday the 13th movie. Um, Condensed and... It's a real fucking great scene, I thought. Um, And I know... Mm. I've read before that people consider it to be one of the best scenes in the franchise. Um... Calling it a scene feels generous. It's a series yeah, of scenes. Yeah. It's a sequence. Um, and then the title comes up and you get the the proper movie, which is about a bunch of um, teens. It's about what every fucking Friday the 13th movie is about. <laughs> yeah, but there's a, there is a more, more to it. The, um, the guy from yeah, Supernatural. Yeah, the guy from Supernatural's sister is missing. Um, yeah, his sister who was in the that pre-title sequence. And he's trying to find her and Jason's there and kills a bunch of them in all exciting different ways. Um, they they find out the sister's alive because I think the sister resembles Jason's mother as a young woman, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then they fight him, they kill them. The only people left is the guy from Supernatural um, and his sister, and it ends with them... They're making love. Thro- <laughs> throwing Jason's body into Camp Crystal Lake, after which yeah. he rises from the depths to attack and we <laughs> cut to black. Do you know what's funny about the guy from Supernatural? Is that, um, what's his name? It's not Jensen Ackles, it's the other guy. I don't know. It's one of those weird things where it's like, you're, I'm just told that this guy's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, Jared Padalecki, yeah. in, in Supernatural, he plays a guy named Sam and Jensen Ackles is his brother and he plays a guy named Dean. But in Gilmore Girls, Jared Padalecki played a guy named Dean. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a fun little fact, isn't it, Richard? You're welcome for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and yeah, so uh, I oh, it's also it also stars Arlen Escapada, who we interviewed last year for our Halloween episode. He's he's also in um, Final Super, Station Five. Super super nice dude. Yeah, he was a super nice dude, super cool. And you know what? He's he's one of the better actors in the movie, so that's always nice. To, <laughs> and truly, I just I just wouldn't have said anything if I didn't think he was. So that's how you know that's a genuine compliment. Like he's he delivers one of the more believable performances. Um, the yeah, it's. It's a very it's a very updated Friday the Thirteenth. Everything looks like that era of horror. Yeah, well, it's also interesting because, um, like Amityville Horror and Texas Chainsaw Massacre are both period pieces. Right. And this one, they made a conscious decision to not oh. make it because, it, um, so they could update it. Right, um, there you go. But the 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 general consensus of the film, because I was going to say, so they could update it, and, you know, feel like they bring something fresh to the franchise. But um, the general consensus at the time was that like it's not very good to all right but it, it the main thing is it doesn't bring anything new but now i think it's looked back on like if you google friday the 13th 2009 one of the top things that come up is like it's been 10 years can we admit that it was really fucking good <laughs> um and it's i don't know that go that far but it's like it, i think it's it's honest to the franchise and if you're a big fan of the franchise i can't understand why you would particularly dislike this one i think yeah i think there is there it is it is fun and trendy to say you don't like a studio remake of a film yeah um but at the same time like i said that first 20 minutes is what it it, it gets so much good grace from that that opening opening sequence for me it's so good um what what, what do you reckon as on tomatoes um maybe like 30 (sighs) percent 26 that was close um so yeah that that scene's real good but i think that 
If I was to to describe what I don't like about it, I would say that I don't really like the whole like he looks like his sister. I don't I don't like the the like Jared Padalecki's journey to save his yeah. sister. It's it's all very like oh we need to make this more more than just what it is, and we need to have Jason have some kind of connection to his um you know that that we can that we can yeah. exploit. There needs to be some kind of more emotional human element to him. Um, and that's all good. I don't know. I just, I just didn't really like it. Um, yeah, that much. And it also, it's, it also, you find out there's like underground tunnels through Camp Crystal Lake that he's created, yeah. and that's how he moves. And it's one of those things that's like answering a question no one was asking. Yay! How does he get around so fast? Well, it's not that no one was asking it. It's that people prefer a, like a, a supernatural yeah yeah um answer because th- there's um it's it's funny the way they address it in the friday the 13th game um because you have if you're playing as jason you have certain powers one is you can travel anywhere you want on the map and it takes like you know a while to to re um to reload and then one of them allows you to travel like a like a ring wraith mm. from lord of the rings where it's like or the um the the camera going through the woods that you see and um and the evil dead and I, th- I thought that was quite a fun like yeah yeah it's it's a good gameplay way to to show that yeah um but it's actually the whole um re- remake thing and and how it adapts it so this was uh it's actually technically classed as a sequel um and that's for legal reasons because if it's a sequel you don't have to pay the original author as much um and so they showed Victor Miller, who wrote the original film, the script, and he was like, "Well, this is a fucking, this is a remake," and so he took legal action. Um, but essentially, the court battle was. Um, so you wrote the original one, yep. Um, all that you wrote is really in the first two minutes of the film, so and it's a montage. So it's like technically, you know, this could take place at any time. It's not a remake it's not a remake of the first film it's maybe a remake of the second and third um yeah but yeah it's 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 the same way that um the incredible hulk with edward norton he glosses over his origin story in a pre-title sequence interesting i like that the um ongoing debate between classification of sequel has become a um a court case a legal battle at some point (laughs) um but I can, yeah, yeah, and and it is a. Well, I say remake, but it's more it more like overwrites those. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a because, reboot. It's, it's yeah, trying to reinvigorate yeah. the franchise and, and there's no, new co- people. yeah, there's yeah. no no really common story elements. It's a new story with Jason back. Um, that that as I say, technically rewrites part two and three. Um, compared to mm. like the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, which is a straight we'll sc- get to script, script r- <laughs> remake. Um. Yeah. So the, what's what's really um, notable about a 2009 horror movie such as this is that um, this was a time that was uh, pretty c- could often be pretty exploitative towards uh, women and and uh, young actresses, a- as we said, yeah. Um, and there's there's one death in this in this movie that really struck a chord with me because it was like this is right in the middle of this is so gross male gaze like filmmaking <laughs> and also god that what a great genre kill what a, like <laughs> like it's it's it, i was simultaneously offended and i was like damn that was a good kill <laughs> <laughs> um and so that scene is one of the one of the girls has been um she's in the lake she's another the guy driving the boat that what, what was she doing what's it called Ski. wakeboarding Wait, what's it called? Water skiing, yeah. Water skiing, board. yeah. Yeah, she she had ten days to learn how to do that. Fun well, fact. there you go. And so she's been she's been doing it topless, and he gets killed in the boat, and she gets hit by the boat driving over her, and she sort of half dazed swims topless over to the wharf because she sees Jason off in the woods, and she's she's hiding under the wharf, and she looks up through the cracks of the wharf and sees him walking back and forth, and she's sort of just waiting there, trying not to make too much of a sound. And then the camera does like is like a front on shot of her like sort of neck deep, and just just head above the yeah, water, just head yeah. above the water. And then Jason's machete slides through the cracks very fast into her head. Her like eyes roll back to the top of the head, into the top of her head. And as Jason lifts the machete to like pull it back out, uh, it lifts her body up so that you see her titties. And she falls back into the her water. Her breasts are and, um, 
yeah, yeah exposed about the water. And it's very, it's like, very funny. It's, it's, very it's very funny. It's very pulpy. It's the kind of thing you'd expect to see in like piranha or something. Yeah, yeah. And it totally understands the language of the genre, but it's also like inarguably kind of sleazy. <laughs> at the same yeah, time. I, I was going to mention the like sex and nudity of this film because this is the there's, sexiest a, there's, film. A, there's a lot of nudity. This, in this is film. such a sexy um, film. So much so that Michael Bay walked out of the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, serious? Yeah, and um, th- th- there's this one sex scene um, where it's it's very like, for lack of a better word, sexy. <laughs> um, Sorry again. We talked about the, this a bit on the Discord. Apologies for being horny on main. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a sex scene with. Um, with this and just like the dialogue you you got great nipple placement baby and he says your tits are stupendous it's an insane sex scene it is so weird it's and it's because it's it's supposed to be like like um this dialogue would make sense um and the like losing their virginity scene and super bad mm. but when it's like the real hot dude having sex with the real hot chick and he's like oh hey babe your, your nipple placement's real good <laughs> and it's and the the only information it really conveys you about the character is that one of them's cheating on his girlfriend um and it's i didn't like and the fact that i couldn't tell you anything about her as a character other than her except for her nipple placement (laughs) (laughs) is you know as a testament to how like kind of ugly the treatment of the female characters is at least for Mm. for that part um it's a very like this is (laughs) the sex scenes in this are like this is the kind of movie that you you that I would have like rented out with my parents in in 2009 being like let's watch a horror movie because we always watch horror movies as kids and this is like the nightmare of a sex scene to be in a movie <laughs> watch you know what i mean like this is the yeah. worst possible kind of sex scene to be in a a movie you're watching with your parents it's, it's- i thought you were gonna say it's the kind of movie that you like write with your friends when you're 13 <laughs> <laughs> and it's like it's like yeah yeah and then she gets killed but oh but we see her titties right before she dies <laughs> It's very true. Um, but it's, yeah, it is an absolute, it's like, ah, uh, it's such an intense, insane, weird sex scene and it's unnecessary and it goes for too long. Um, but it is in there and it, and it bumps up the, the like medium, the, like the average kind of level of, um, raunchiness of the franchise of both franchises up quite a lot there's not yeah. really anything quite else like like that scene in the rest of the movies yeah all right i want to ask what do you think of this new interpretation of jason um what is different about this interpretation <laughs> of jason? well okay so the one thing i noticed the main thing i noticed anyway was that um i mean there's a scene where i think it's in the, in the sort of pre-titled 20 minute sequence where one of the women is worrying about what's going on and jason like fucking sprints towards her really it's the only time we like see him wow sprint and also he he shoots um the guy who's who's um driving the boat he gets shot with a crossbow which is one of two times that jason uses like a projectile weapon hmm which feels which feels a lot more precise than the kind of brute force machete we're used to, um, and, and I think that the kind of in, the intended interpretation of Jason is that he's a lot more like surviving off the land and like he's like territorial. Yeah, um, that's a good I, point. I definitely got. It's not like you're having sex, you must die, stab. Oh, you're in my way, die. It's like these people are in my home and I'm taking them out one by one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think that's... You obviously didn't notice that. Well, no, yeah, I'm trying... Yeah, now I frantically try to come up with an opinion for it. Um, and what do you... Do you like it? What do you think of it? Um, it, it does Richard, feel I like think some, whatever you think. <laughs> it does feel like somewhat of a betrayal of, like, what we know and love about Jason. Mm. Yeah, I definitely prefer the um, revenge kind of, like... The, the the like sexually repressed Jason of old <laughs> is, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is more more relatable, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh so I guess we'll just move on to continue the franchise. Mm. Uh, oh, do, do I mention the body count of this film? No, what is it? What would you guess? Um, let me count. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You forgot two, thirteen, and fourteen. <laughs> do do the cut? Do the brother and sister die at the end? No, I don't know. Yeah, well, we, we don't see. It. They, they, there is a, before they they find the sister. There is like a main girl in it who's helping. Yeah, Jared who just fucking dies. She fucking bites it, and it sucks. It's such a sad death. Like, I guess props to the filmmakers for surprising me with a death in a yeah. in a horror movie where it feels like the the survivors are inevitable. But it just it's it's one of those ones that really bums you out because it's like, it not only does she die, but as far as she knows, she died thinking that just failed. To, to save yeah. the day, you know. <laughs> so continue the franchise. So there, there's been a few like times that they've planned sequels. So, um, in 2009, a sequel was announced to be coming out in 2010. Obviously, didn't happen. Uh, it actually fell apart when because so this was a co-production between Paramount and New Line. Paramount allowing New Line to use uh, anything from the original film, including the title, which is why it's called Friday the Thirteenth. Um, like Platinum Dune's got the got the rights for that. Um and it actually neither company wanted to back down, but like like so it was kind of like at a stalemate where they both wanted to produce it, but they knew that one of them would have to do it themselves and neither one wanted to back down in case it was really successful and they'd look look stupid for backing down. And right. this was also going on when the economy was in the toilet and you know they were they were being very selective about what, what projects they wanted to pursue. Well, what better um, time now than now to revive the mm. <laughs> Friday the Thirteenth series? And then in twenty eleven, um, they so that that fell apart in late twenty ten. They they announced it was officially not happening. In two thousand eleven, uh, a sequel was announced to have been written, and then in twenty thirteen, Warner Brothers relinquished like what rights they had to the franchise so that they could co-produce interstellar they made a deal um a week later platinum dunes the company said that a sequel was being made as soon as possible in 2015 they announced it would be coming out in 2016 which um when we recorded the first time it was supposed to it was one of those films that like this is supposed to be coming out in a month or like a month ago and they just never heard about it um and then it was pushed to 2017 it would have been called friday the 13th part 13 and they were casting a young jason for it it was officially cancelled in february of 2017 and then they announced the script was um called friday the 13th camp blood the death of jason Voorhees. yeah that's is, is that a three colon title uh it's a colon and a hyphen or oh, mission impossible styles huh yeah uh, and then there was also um, someone on a Discord, mm. uh, a new Alan Smithy, mm. famous director, um, pointed out a sequel that had been written by the guy behind Channel Zero, the TV show. Uh, that's that's TV available show. online if you want to check it out. And that was supposed to come out in, tw- that was part of the 2017 thing, but it was um, the failure of the film Rings was one of the reasons that it didn't come out too well. I guess just people don't want horror movies. Um, and also they were too busy developing Darren Aronofsky's mother. Right. And they, I think um, Alan Smithy said that was going to be called Friday the 13th 3D. Yeah. Um, and so that, that brings us up to now when the, the lawsuit from um, mm. two weeks ago t- um, took over. So do you have a continue, any ideas of where to take the franchise? I mean, not no more than what I said um, when we covered it for friday the friday the 13th episode that it'd be interesting to see like i don't think you can make a horror movie that's as vapid and empty thematically as these ones are now i think people yeah. people expect it to be a metaphor for some kind of um social issue or whatever and so because of that i i yeah that that's what i would i don't even i don't not want to see that i would like to see that um but i don't i certainly don't have any more ideas than that what about mm. you um well i should mention uh, i was talking to jess earlier about a friend of the podcast um about uh if she had any ideas and she suggested uh, a mobile game and then she suggested that you do a friday the 13th or nightmare on elm street or a combination um like storyline of that game episodes you know that's always advertised on games like that um no, where you have like understand. um it's very it's all like teen dramas and it's like you get <laughs> uh, it's like kiss him or kick him in the nuts um and so 
that would be <laughs> a game <laughs> like that. Man, we need to get Jess on episodes of Film Franchise Fortnite. So this is <laughs> the type of continue the franchise gold she's offering. <laughs> uh, all right. So now we're at our final film of the 20, uh, which is A Nightmare on Elm Street, which came out 10 years ago in 2010. Directed by Samuel Bayer. And what's this one about? Uh, it's just the first Nightmare on Elm Street. It's a remake of but, it. But now it's move over Freddy and welcome Fredophile. Because now Freddy's a pedophile yeah. in canon. It was it was suggested. Now it's confirmed. Um, yeah. So it's a remake yeah, of what, it. So, so it was, uh, this was part of Wes's original plan, but there was a... I think there was a series of like child molestations going on and he didn't want to look like he was capitalizing on that. And also it was just too dark. You would not be like, so on, so on. A series of child molestations is not a headline you really want to read in the newspaper. Yeah, it's not one you want to try and capitalize on either. <laughs> um, but so it was brought back for this film as like a, you know, a, a way to add something new um, and also trying to make Freddy a bit scarier. Yeah. And also like, because there's a few reasons, but the one that I actually found really interesting and i was like this is actually the best idea in this movie like it makes it one of the best ideas in it is that um kids now kids growing up in the 2010s that um have you you can't hide a series of child murders from a group of kids whereas like because you know molestation is like it's so easy. It's about believing victims. A traditionally and like hidden thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, whereas, like, like, murder would be so easy for the kids to just look up and be like, oh, shit. Like, a bunch of kids either, like, went missing if they weren't. But, um, you know, a, a, like, a generation of traumatized kids mm. who have all repressed the memory, that's, you can't Google that, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so that's actually kind of a good idea. Yeah. Um, so if you don't remember, it's just basically that uh, as revenge for being burnt alive for molesting their kids, Freddy is now haunting the kids' dreams and killing them in, in their dreams. Um, other notable things about this movie is that it, that Nancy is now played by um, a pre-fame Rooney Mara. Um, yeah. who, who was just, just about to do... Um, this came out the same year as Social Network, which was this kind of, her kind of... Rise to fame. Mm, which is so and interesting because she's, she's so much better than this movie and it's so weird to yeah, see. Yeah, she hated being in this one so much she almost quit acting. Wow. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, it's just such a like a a horror movie remake is is in in this time period it was a very specific kind of movie and Rooney Mara yeah. is like a much more prestigious actress i guess in my yeah eyes. I, d- I did want to talk about the, the whole like platinum dunes like tw- 2000s remakes it's like you, you know you, you hear a lot about like gritty reboots like the dark knight these are like grimy reboots yeah yeah like it, it feels like there's a thin layer of like slime on yeah. every frame and it's like the, 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 a lot of them are like actually yellow tinted like mm. especially um Texas Chainsaw yes. and this. Yeah. And it's like, they just look like unclean. Yeah. And not in like a cool, like horror way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually the third time I've seen this movie. I saw this in the in the cinema when it came out. Really? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, the other notable thing about it is that uh, Jackie Earl Haley plays um, Freddy. First time in the series that Freddy has been substantially played by someone other than Robert hey. England. Look at you saying substantially. Well, yeah. he's been portrayed by a woman in, in her eye in, fr- in yeah, part and part someone two. else's hand. Yep. Um, and uh, Jackie Earl Haley, if you don't know, uh, played Rorschach in the 2009 Watchmen film. Uh, and that's about all he's done. <laughs> like, I don't know if he has any other like big he roles. He was in a film called Little Children, which he was nominated for an Oscar for. Really? Um, oh, wow. Where he plays a pedophile. Wow, very nice. Um, it's creepy that a <laughs> he's film also, he's called, in Shutter Island. Oh yeah, yeah, true, yeah, yeah. It's creepy that a film called Little Children is about pedophilia. Like, like that's yeah. that's the joke I would make reading the title, and then be like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have made that joke. Uh, <laughs> um, and look, the nicest thing I can say about this film is that Jackie Earl Haley at that time in his career is a really inspired casting choice for Freddy Krueger. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. 
He's not like now, <laughs> his portrayal yeah. of Freddy isn't very good. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that mm. it's an inspired performance. Ca- but the, oh my god, he's he's the perfect person to cast. Yeah, and if you cast him now, everyone would be like, "Who's that?" Um, but but yeah, I think that um, yeah, he's. It's at a, at the very least, it sets this movie apart from the previous nightmare movies in, in a in a massive way. There is no sense of humor in this movie. It's all serious, and yeah. it's a it's a very serious portrayal of Freddy Krueger um, that we don't get with with Robert England's more Pennywise the clown kind of yeah. interpretation. And, and Robert England had some had some words to say about it because he he initially was like. Like before the film came out, he was more than happy to pass the torch, kind of thing. Yeah, said, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm super happy. And Jackie O'Haley, great, great casting. Like you just have to watch him and and watch him and all the little children to know that he's like the perfect guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then since the film came out, he said, um, a couple of reasons that he thinks it might have failed. Um, that uh should have waited a bit longer because. The like all of his films had just been re released on on Blu ray, and it's like, um, you don't need to introduce new a new generation to the character yet. Um, and also the other thing, because teens are so into getting Blu rays, (laughs) well, it's just like you know, that they they came back and like the same thing as being added to Netflix now, like, right? Okay, I'm sorry, Robert, but also the other thing is that, um, this film starts off with um, Callum Lutz from Twilight. Uh, killing yes. himself in a diner or appearing to kill himself because he's been killed by Freddy. Um, and it's like this film just starts off with them being haunted by Freddy. There's, you don't see them in normal life um, just as happy-go-lucky teens who have these things happening to them. They're like right from frame one, there's something weighing on these children. Well, that, and so yeah. these, these teenagers. And so you never like buy into them you never mm. you do like care about them as much because it's like oh a bunch of moody teenagers you like, do yeah, you, do, you do see them the first thing you see in the original movie is them being haunted but no one dies till after we've established the characters so that's a good, yeah. good point um i want to i want to do a, a bit of a vocal impression of jackie earl haley's freddy krueger just because i feel like mm-hmm. that needs to it needs to be portrayed somehow so okay so so richard what does robert england's freddy krueger sound like Welcome to prime time, bitch. Right, and Jackie Earl Haley's Freddy Krueger is sort of like, we're gonna we're gonna play a game. <laughs> That's interesting. That might be the worst impression I've ever heard. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> That's what he sounds like. What are you talking about? It's like drawled out, like kind of. Like, no, he, he, he sounds exactly like Rorschach. Yeah, he does sound like Rorschach. <laughs> like. But you don't. You never hear Rorschach laugh, so maybe that's what I'm. I, I'm noticing as a difference. Fuck! I'll just play a clip from the movie. Here is yeah. here is Robert England. I've been guarding my gate for a long time, bitch. And here is Jackie O'Haley. Why are you screaming? I haven't even caught you yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the the thing is, and so um, all of his dialogue was. Um, ADR'd and made to sound a bit more haunting, and it's so obvious. Like, mm. if I, I imagine if you saw this in the cinema, which you did, that it's very clear. And the same thing happened in The Dark Knight Rises when it's like it, it doesn't look like it's coming from a character when you're listening to it in surround sound, and it's like, oh, it's trying to give off an ethereal, he's coming from anywhere, but it's like it just sounds like it's been pasted over the top of right, what's going yeah, on in the yeah. scene. Yeah, it doesn't feel baked in, and and that that similar thing could be said to how he looks as well, because he's I, it's it's CGI more than makeup. This yeah, time. it's the same team that did um, Two Face and right, The Dark Knight, oh, well. actually. Um, but um, and, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a lot more. They they studied actual burn victims, and it's supposed to look. He's got like part of his cheek missing, and this the skin like it goes more white when it like has burned and healed rather than uh, like the the pinky kind of red of, of Freddy Krueger. Mm, I think the original Freddy Krueger works, even if it's less realistic, because it's yeah. less realistic. Well, that's the thing that, that, like, when you when you take this super realistic burns and you put them in a fedora and a, and a <laughs> yeah. Christmas sweater, like, it, it, there's this weird cognitive dissonance. Yeah, yeah, it it lo- it's almost bad taste to have to feature this Freddy. What I do, I do like how you see Jackie Earl Haley 
um and as just as as a pre pre killed freddy krueger in this movie i think i think it's cool to see to yeah. see him and also things. like so this this was the thing so it's introduced early on that like um because they go the kids go to the parents and say we're being stalked in our nightmares and like, and our friends are dying um and it's because of this man and they go look you're just having repressed memories because you were molested when you were a kid um and then you see all these flashbacks and you see Jackie O'Haley and he's like screaming for his life. And it's one of those things where Jackie O'Haley's the best actor in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and so you, you immediately latch on to this and be like, oh my God, you poor thing. Like, this must be horrible being accused of this stuff. And it's a, and it is a end, good performance, it. eh? It's like, him, he's like, yeah. please no, I didn't do anything. It's a very, it's harrowing. Yeah. It's quite, and yeah. you see him interacting with the kids and you're like, this is just an innocent relationship. Because yeah, yeah. he worked at like the kindergarten where they all went. And um and then at the end you find because the the part of the big thing is like um the kids had said like oh he takes us to this cave and then they never found the cave um and so they're like he was innocent because you never found it but then the final showdown takes place in this like this hideout where he obviously you know did these horrible things and you you'd like um Rooney Mara's character finds like some Polaroids that were obviously taken of her um as as a little kid and so then it's like it becomes too dark but and i spoke about this last week that like i i, th- I think freddie is would be such a more interesting character if he was innocent up until he was killed well especially in this rendition by making yeah. him a pedophile like being a falsely accused pedophile carries with it a whole lot of cultural conversation um that yeah that would be super interesting to see and again because jackie o'haley gives such a convincing performance that you feel bad for him at points in the movie i do yeah i do wonder if um yeah if if it, if, if it would be a more interesting movie if the twist was that he was if it twisted that so that he was innocent maybe like because it kind of twists mm. that he's guilty but it's like well of course he's yeah. guilty like if it was yeah, a twist yeah, yeah. that he's, he's innocent that's one of those um brave s- stamps you're putting on your own version of a nightmare on elm street yeah, yeah. that you don't see a lot in remakes yeah yeah so yeah like what, what did you think of the decision to make him a pedophile rather than a murderer i mean again it all just adds to him being a more darker and creepier yeah, character but like, it, it feels like you couldn't have seven sequels to this no like and and, and, and I, like, I don't want to keep coming back i don't want to come back for a nightmare on elm street five when it's like yeah this this like edgy pedophile is fucking <laughs> delivering literally wearing a fedora not even one-liners just <laughs> threats it's like <laughs> yeah 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 you, pedophiles are, are you know what pedophiles just aren't likable it's mm. simple as that. Child killers, yes, give me seven seconds. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and also like the fact as well. In case you hadn't, um, you hadn't figured this. This movie generally isn't considered to be very good. What does it have on Roddy T's? Do you want me to guess this time? On on ten on ten toes, as I've been <laughs> wanting to call it for the forgotten two on podcast for months. I'll guess what it is this time. Okay, okay? fifteen. No, it's actually ninety eight. Um, <laughs> it is 15 um yeah so and it's it's generally not considered very good samuel bayer is like a a very prolific very well respected music video director he did smells like teen spirit he did all of green day's videos from american idiot um he's done a bunch more you can look it up but this was his first movie and he turned down the movie like three times before michael bay called him and was like this is going to be a huge step for your career and he hasn't made another movie since oh my god wow that sucks yeah like it, it, because especially like at the start of this movie i really felt that it's like it, to me it was like this is obviously a music video director so Zack snyder is kind of the same because he mm-hmm. comes from a music video background so is david fincher that like it, it's the first thing and you know some directors are able to work around this like david fincher some aren't and they can never get past this but like um the the main priority is that like the it looks cool you know yeah like Zack Snyder, say what you will about the story, but like his um, visual storytelling and like each shot is like a cool image. Yeah. And maybe, and you know, people give shit to like Man of Steel or Batman v Superman for like the, the Christ allegory being super obvious, but you can get away with that in a music video. You can get away like, with it in visual storytelling as well. As a, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and Samuel Bayer does a lot, a little bit of that, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, hmm. 
And, and I mean, like, you know, maybe, maybe it does just feel a bit like a uh, first time director's kind of film. Michael Bay calls you up and says you should direct this film. And you're like, well, if Fantastic never directed a bad movie, director Michael Bay said I should do it. He does know what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay called me up, tried to convince me to direct a film. I'd be like, leave me alone. Stop calling me. <laughs> it is. We, we talked about this on the James Bond podcast, but about like PS1, PS2, PS3, and PS4 movies. Mm-hmm. Movies that embody the spirit of those consoles. Of those generations. Without any specific ties to a specific video game. Yeah. So um, it's like... The original Nightmare on Elm Street is like a PS1 game sure. where it's um, it's a really good idea. They maybe don't have all the tools to to show it yet. Yeah. Um, and then Nightmare on uh, Elm sorry, Freddy vs. Jason is like the PS2 game. Yeah. Or even Dream Warriors is like the PS2 game where it's like it's building upon that and it's first and foremost it's about fun mm. ps2 is the greatest console ever made ps3 and this was this is interesting because the other side of the coin from casino royale which we said was a ps3 game but no more 2010 is kind of a ps3 game where it's like look at what we can do with this hardware take us really seriously yeah <laughs> and so i'm interested to see the ps4 version of a nightmare on elm street because PS4 and going into PS5 are kind of like, we've proven ourselves that we are good at storytelling, so we can kind of have a bit of fun with it now, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and it's more about, like, nostalgia and, like, honoring those things that made the PS1 and the PS2 great. Um, mm. And so I, I think there is, somewhere out there, there is a fantastic Nightmare on Elm Street reboot or continuation of some kind, and that's going to be the PS4 version. New Nightmare is a PSP movie. <laughs> it's a PS Vita movie. Yeah. <laughs> no it is i feel like psp games were cheekier and like more about cry like there's got to be a psp game that's like about making a film or something like that i don't know <laughs> i mean you would like should we talk about what there is actually planned yeah we so we sort of missed this on our nightmare on our yeah. episode yeah i talked about um what uh what sequels we almost got but instead of talking about uh, what sequels we may be getting um but also the body count what would you guess it is in this film um five it's uh it's five six if you include freddy do i include freddy no because he comes back he stabs yeah, he goes back, he stabs but... nancy's mum through the i'll say this about the, the remake it's got a better it pulls off the ending better than the yeah than the one from the original that we complained about like it's <laughs> it's like nancy comes home and is talking to her mum and she's like it's all over now and then she looks over in the mirror and behind her mum in the mirror is freddy krueger who stabs the mum in the back of the head and her eyes come out yeah very, cool. very. It feels very supposed to be in three D, even though it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, so continue you mean the franchise. Three D vision, dude. <laughs> it's supposed to be in three D vision. Continue the franchise. So, um, Jackie O'Haley was contracted for three films, and Rooney Mara was contracted for two. So that's where this spread. It's, it's been ten <laughs> years, and I don't think they're going to happen. Um. So, uh, yeah, this is, I forgot to mention last week the current state of the franchise, but in 2015, another remake was announced. Uh, in 2016, it was announced to be in development hell. Robert England said that he would love to come back for a cameo, and he said, I certainly would like, I would certainly like to be invited to do a cameo to maybe play the cantankerous old professor or the group therapy guy that doesn't believe they're having nightmares. I think it would be fun for the audience. I love Robert England. He, yeah. he gets it. He gets it. Yeah. <laughs> uh so on september 29th 2015 england tweeted just for the record i will not be starring as freddie in any new nightmare projects real or fictional officially retiring from the role and he voiced his interest in having kevin bacon play the character way to punch up <laughs> robert england <laughs> <laughs> yeah which would make kevin bacon one of if not the only people to be in the first friday the 13th movie and then go on to play Freddy Krueger. <laughs> One of, if not the only thing. <laughs> so, since then, um, Robert England has played the character twice more. <laughs> or, um, do you know what those times are? No, I had no idea. 
So one actually he didn't play the character, but he put the makeup on um, because they did a documentary called Nightmares in the Makeup Chair, which was his sort of ode to these guys who had carried his career for the whole time. So he did like interviews with them while they were putting the makeup on him. Right. That's and cool. also in 2018 for ABC's The Goldbergs, yes. he reprised the character in an episode called Mr. Knifey Hands. <laughs> yeah, for like a dream because that show's set in the 90s. No, the eighties. Yeah, so it's eighties, yeah. So, and yeah. so and they they also um famously brought uh Rick Moranis out of retirement to voice um Dark Helmet. Oh wow. In an episode. Yeah. Cool. Um and then so in in twenty nineteen, um he said that uh, we need a Freddy that can do the next eight movies or seven. I don't want them to remake part one again. I'm not Freddy anymore, you guys. I could do one more probably if you shot me up with vitamin C. But here's the thing. I can't do eight more, you guys. So we need a new actor that you guys believe in and can trust and love and will trust them to go the distance. Um, it's worth mentioning as well that Robert England is currently um, 73. <laughs> is he really? Holy yeah. shit. Wow. Of course he is. Yeah, so mm. give him a break. But yeah, he, 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 like it's very interesting. He, he seems like a like a cool dude, and, and like you said, he, he gets it. So um, I mentioned last week about an interesting clause in um, American copyright that allows the original author of something to claim it back after 35 years mm -hmm. and so 2019 was obviously the 35th anniversary of 1984 when the first film came out so the rights reverted back to wes craven's estate uh, and then they announced last year that they were actively taking pictures for what to do with the nightmare on elm street franchise um and whether that's a film or an hbo max series i heard i got told by one of my students because i'm a film tutor um, that Elijah Wood is in talks to play Freddy in like a TV show. Did you find anything about that? Uh, I remember hearing about that, but I don't think there's anything concrete. I, I'll make that my continue the franchise then. I think Elijah Wood is a great idea for a Freddy Krueger, a new Freddy Krueger. I think he's the perfect type of actor you'd want to cast. Like someone who's who's really talented and kind of has precedent for playing that kind of role before, but at the same time, it's is kind of juxtaposing because he's such a doe doe eyed, um, cute person. I would love to see his interpretation of Freddy Krueger. What do you think? Uh, yeah. So he's um, I mean, I get where you're coming from, but um, yeah, he's he's. The, essentially him and daniel noah said that um who they they produce uh, mandy and the color out of space mm -hmm. uh they just said that they have a very specific take they would love to pitch um and that you they said kind of an origin story again you have to let freddie go and move into a different direction uh you have to bring him along for the ride initially but then let someone else run with it um and they said they would want Robert England to come back to play him to like hand that that franchise off. Okay. And uh Mike Flanagan, um, who's the guy behind Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep and Haunting of Hill House, he says he has a killer idea. He has a he's dying to do to pitch his killer idea for a nightmare in Elmstead. I don't like the idea that it's a passing the torch movie. That feels well, like maybe you don't want Yeah, that, that feels like that's what a nightmare on Elm Street can't be, is a passing the torch movie. Yeah. <laughs> um oh well, that's interesting. What do, you, do you have any yeah. ideas for how what would you want to see in a reboot? Um, okay, so my continuing the franchise is to get Robert England to suit up as Freddy one more time and record a bunch of stuff, like just, just improv for like three days in front of a green screen. And then maybe you and I would edit that footage into every movie or tv show that was revealed to have been a dream the whole time on the tommy westfall universe yeah 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 <laughs> that's I mean, not necessarily just that but like that um that final scene in twilight that was a vision oh like, right yeah, yeah um yeah that's great that, that whole season of dallas <laughs> <laughs> the ending of inception just to finally put that to bed it was a yeah, dream. yeah yeah all right so We've made it. How do you feel? Oh, I feel horrible, dude. I feel a bit sick. Um, coronavirus has recently returned to New Zealand, so maybe I've got that. Yeah, just in you, though. Yeah. It's in me. Um, we do... Do we want to re-rank these, these puppies? Yeah, well, um, I mean, if you'd let me um, fucking finish... Oh, sorry. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so we've got a new segment we haven't done in a few weeks, uh, which is ranking that franchise. But now, of course, we've finished two franchises in one episode because I I put off ranking them until we mm. um, we had finished them. So currently, um, A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th are at 20 and 21, respectively, uh, falling between Ghostbusters and Halloween. Now, <laughs> I, we put all those horror ones together, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Um, I want to say, I think Friday the 13th should be above A Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, here's why. This is what I've been saying to people this like the last two weeks since I've been saying that I've been watching these films. I think Friday the 13th is a better franchise, but A Nightmare on Elm Street is a better film. If, if someone was like, I only have time to watch one, what should I watch? Definitely the first Nightmare on Elm Street. If someone goes, I want to marathon all of them, definitely Friday the 13th. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that on the podcast last week yeah but so, now yeah no i agree let's do it yeah. let's swap them just swap them yep i don't think they need to move from where they are um, yeah why not uh, i don't think that either any of them are better than ghostbusters at its best so so cool that, that's it's been done um and then do you do you want to go over just our frank our rankings oh yeah let's do that that's fun um Okay, so this is on le- our letterboxed accounts, um, which you can find links to in the um, show notes for this episode, um, and every episode actually, is, is um, the Cole Popsha letterboxed and AJ's letterboxed and Richard's letterboxed. So um, how do we? I've got a Friday the 13th movie ranking, a Nightmare on Elm Street ranking, and a Freddy vs. Jason, all 20 films. Well, let's ranking. just talk about our Freddy vs. Jason rankings, and okay. people can hunt down the other ones if you want, because the, the other rankings are implied by yes, this they, one. they slot into each other, yeah. Yeah. All right, so at number 20, I've got the worst film in both franchises, which I pertain, is Friday the 13th, Jason Takes Manhattan. That is followed by Jason Goes to Hell at 19. At 18, I've got Friday the uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Master. Then at 17, I've got Friday the 13th, sorry, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. And then I've got The Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 remake. At 15, I've got Friday the 13th, The New Blood, followed by Friday the 13th, 2009, uh, followed by Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare at 13. At 12, I've got Friday the 13th, Part 5, A New Beginning. At 11, I've got Friday the 13th, Part 6, Jason Lives. At 10, my top 10, I've got Jason X. At 9, I've got the original Friday the 13th. At 8, I've got Friday the 13th, Part 3. At 7, I've got Freddy vs. Jason. At six, I've got A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. At five, I've got Friday the 13th, Part 2. At four, I've got Friday the 13th, The Final Chapter. At three, I've got the original Nightmare on Elm Street. At two, I've got A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. And at number one, I've got Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So we're at number two and number 14 are the same. Ooh. I'll try and go through mine a bit quicker. Um, <laughs> so in last place, Jason goes to hell the final Friday. Above that, A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Child. That's number five. Uh, Jason Takes Manhattan, then Nightmare 2010, then Part 7, The New Blood, Friday the 13th, that, that is. Part, uh, number 15, Friday the 13th, Part 3, number 14, Friday the 13th, 2009, same as AJ. 13 is Nightmare on Elm Street 4, Dream Master. 12 is Friday the 13th Part 2. 11 is Friday the 13th A New Beginning. Top 10, Friday the 13th The Original. Um, Nightmare 2. Number 8 is Freddy's Dead The Final Nightmare. Number 7 is Part 6 Jason Lives. 6 is Jason Lives. Uh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. 6 is Jason X. Um, 5 is Friday the 13th The Final Chapter. 4 is Freddy vs. Jason. Top 3, New Nightmare, Dream Warriors, and A Nightmare on Elm Street The Original. Nice. Very cool, very sexy, and you know what? I'll say it, very spooky. <laughs> For Halloween, we should be like, very scary. <laughs> very spooky. Jason jumps out of you and you're like, very scary. You don't react, you don't get a fright. <laughs> All right, now, what is it time for, AJ? Richard, it's time for a long and ancient an ancient segment, one that the, the ancients, the, the elders spoke on, spoke of and you know drew cave drawings 
mixing a lot of <laughs> ideas here um, that we haven't done for a while, and that is uh, f- 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 franchise roulette, where we've got a list of something like two hundred and something franchises. We're going to get a random number generator, and then one of us is going to look at the list and make the other one guess what the next franchise we're going to do is. Do you want to look, or am I looking this time? Uh, have you got the the um, list in front of you? Uh, I can. I can do. I've got it already. So, um, <laughs> you get all the fun. You get to make me guess like a loser. Well, you just sit there laughing at me with your random number generator. Our next franchise is one we've already covered on the podcast because we didn't take it off the list. Wait, you haven't given us the number. I know, but I I, I got the number and then saw that it was what was one it? we'd already. Um, it was Mad Max <laughs> Redux Part Two, baby. <laughs> part okay, three. fifty-three. Fifty-three. Mm-hmm. What would you guess that is? <laughs> no, that, give me something first. Uh, okay, it is a trilogy. Nice, getting a lot of trilogies lately. This is the we went from technically, if you count film franchise Fortnite's Redux as a different series to film franchise Fortnite's, this is our fourth trilogy in a row. Actually, I should. I ju- I just saw that the Expendables is still on the list. So it's changed. It's not a trilogy anymore. Wait, no. Well, you can still do the same one. A lot of them are still on the list. Okay. Well, uh, God, now I've got to choose for you. What? <laughs> okay. Do you want the trilogy or the five movies? I want the... Uh, what, what one should I pick? <laughs> um, I feel like... Just I uh, just choose one. <laughs> what I what one would you prefer? Um, probably the five movies. Would Would you hate to do the trilogy? I think you would hate to do the trilogy. Oh my god! Okay, I'll go for the five movies then. All right. So on the next film franchise Fortnite's, we won't be covering Human Centipede. We oh, will be shit. covering Terminator. Whoa! Holy crap! That's <laughs> six films. There's six Terminators. Is there six now? Okay, we wrote currently five at the time, but yeah, there's there's a sixth one now. Um, wow, bro, that's big. <laughs> that's we're moving right to our next heavy hitter almost immediately. Yeah. One thing I will say about Human Centipede, though, um, real good titles. I really like the titles for the series. <laughs> um, sound off in the comments below if you wish we were doing Human Centipede over Terminator. Terminator, holy shit. Yeah, man. That's, I've never seen Terminator 2. This is such Or the a, second half of Terminator 1. This is such a, like, natural progression from Freddy and Jason. Yeah, man. In a way that I almost am uncomfortable with the, like, um, sense that it makes, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, it feels like we're, we're, we're burning through the good ones. Like, if you were to look at this podcast and you hadn't listened to an episode and you saw we did Friday the 13th, a Nightmare With James Street, Bond, Friday and, the 13th. Yeah, then, then Terminator, you'd be like, all oh, right, so they go through the classics. It's like, no. <laughs> I'm, no, we don't. We do the Mighty Ducks. I'm waiting for an American tale. <laughs> Five <Yeah>. <laughs> <Papa>. <laughs> ah uh, cool All right. wow holy shit terminator rowan will be happy yeah wow Alrighty. all right well that's that's uh the podcast for today thank you so much if you listened this far and um and if you voted for us to redo free vs jason i feel like we've given it what it deserves now absolutely um and i'm sure that we'll fucking <laughs> next week's podcast or next fortnight's podcast is going to be a, a chonker <laughs> yeah to get through it's all really chonky that. boy um so yeah if you enjoyed this podcast and i should have said this before um the we announced what movies we're doing next week so next fortnight so that you had um reason to stay on although there is still a post credit sequence at the end mm-hmm. um, but if you enjoyed us you should check us out on facebook and youtube and instagram and twitter and um there are two two youtube accounts one for the videos and one for the podcast um and we also have a discord server as i mentioned at the start where you can come and chat to us and i've said this before but i want to stress just how um not too cool for you we will be on the discord i have had (laughs) multiple one-on-one conversations with people in that discord server so if you and i don't know maybe this is presumptuous of me if you have this idea 
that Richard and I are these too busy to talk to our fans kind of guys. If anything, we could stand to be a little bit more um, distant from our fans, I think. <laughs> um, because we, we talk about all sorts of stuff in that Discord server, which you can find a link to in the show notes, along with everything else that I've mentioned. Um, you can also donate to us on Patreon if you want to support the show. And also, um, you can email us at coldpopsionmedia at gmail.com. Feel free to email us and tell us your ranking for Freddy vs. Jason. Um, if you send us your letterbox, I'll follow you on the Cold Popshire account. So there's a little feather in your cap. <laughs> um, if you want that uh but yeah otherwise stay tuned for the post credit sequence and richard we did it bro we did we re when i first watched the freddy vs jason movies back in 2016 the podcast was but a but a crying babe um clawing at my teat for some for some food and we watched them all and i remember after watching them and we did like an hour long podcast compared to what a six hours probably complete version <laughs> now um i remember thinking i wonder if i'll ever watch these movies again <laughs> yeah same you know same, i was right. like it's cool that i've seen them and we talk a big game about like absorbing and collecting franchises we've seen but, yeah but can you really say that if you only watch them all once like are we really still godzilla experts if we've only watched them all once you know you're playing with fire then, <laughs> and but now i can confidently say having watched them twice <laughs> that, yeah that, that i am an expert <laughs> do not question me no but i de- i deeply enjoyed re-watching them all um, yeah, same. and it was really cool to kind even of the bad ones yeah yeah um and yeah what what other horror ones have we got in the future that we need to get to child's play child's play we got um the exorcist series Amityville Horror. Amityville There's Horror. eighteen of those. Oh, fuck. Like three of them, three or four of them came out in the same year. Nice. And uh, and then at the end of the Terminator episode in two weeks, we will also be selecting our franchise based off um, what the patrons suggest and vote for. Mm. Which means that if you want to get in on that, by the time this comes out, you will have maybe a day or two to become a patron before that that poll starts and we'll talk about that in the well like last time we did we, we told the discord server hey this is going live on patreon and in yeah, yeah. 10 minutes or half an hour or whatever it is just so because just like anything if you get in early you have a much better shot yeah exactly um so get on that if you want to support us as well it's only a dollar to do that by the way to, to suggest yeah. and vote um but yeah richard my 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 soulmate my the, deepest condolences. The love of my life. We've done it again. <laughs> we watched yes, these movies. Yes, go off, King. <laughs>
off the top of our heads, essentially. Yeah. Um, it, 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 like, it very rarely, like, we don't sit there and go, oh, lists of film franchises and go, oh, we need to add that one to the list. Um, but, you know, if we do find out about a new franchise, we will add it to the list. Um, mm. And if a movie gets a couple of sequels, we'll add it to the list as well. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I think that the podcast will end long before we cover every <laughs> franchise ever made. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're in danger of that happening. I think I think what might happen is we might get to a point where we've covered every franchise that you think of when you tell people that you're a podcast that covers franchises. I could mm. see that happening. Like, we'll probably get through all the classics um, sooner or later. Uh, but yeah, I don't think... I think there are too many franchises for us to ever truly... Yeah, um, I, I think, um, yeah, well, like, I think we're never going to run out of content for Phil Franchise Fortnites, but I think mm. Phil Franchise Fortnites will end one day. Yeah. 